We'll call and raise up a what? Can't hear you. Because nothing is truly yours until you understand it. So this is Jude. We in Jude start at verse 1. Jude has one chapter. It's the, it's the book right before Revelation. And we're going to go through it, and I want you to lean into it, and I want you to stay awake. And you could be your eyes open, but you could be awake. I need you to stay focused, and I need you to hear what God is saying to you. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ. He's coming right out the box. He's telling you who I serve. He could have told you, I'm Jesus' half-brother. He could have told you, I'm James' brother, Jesus' brother, half-brother as well. James was the pastor over Jerusalem. He could have came to you based on family ties. But he came saying, Jude, I'm a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know if you know this, but before Jude got this revelation, his family member was saying when he was claiming to be Christ, his family member said he lost his mind. I don't know if y'all know that. His, his family, his, his brothers, they thought he was crazy. Y'all got it? So after the resurrection, somebody say after the resurrection. How many of y'all know? Hey, nobody need to tell him. All, all right. I'm quite sure his brother's probably bowing down when he saw him after the resurrection. Because nobody was raised from the dead prior to that. Am I right? Now, I need y'all to get some energy. I sense that some of y'all got stuff on your mind. I don't know what you've been through, but whatever you've been through, God already took you through it. Amen. Now, your soul and your face need to get the message. Y'all got it? Yes. I'm telling you that because if you're not careful, you'll let, you'll let life dictate you instead of you living life. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James. I'm writing to them that are sanctified, set apart, consecrated. And you didn't get consecrated, set apart by yourself. He's talking to you. They call them saints, and we're not talking about the New Orleans saints. We're talking about saints. I know all the cool cats and all the, the uppity millennials and Generation Z and Generation Alpha want, don't want to say these things. They're not cool. But if you don't say what it is, you cease it, it ceases to be what it is. Y'all got it? You are called saints. Somebody say saints. saints. Now, if you get the revelation, you will never be an ain't. You will stop saying, I can't do something. Y'all got it? Because I'm a what? Saint. A saint. What's a saint? A saint is somebody that God has taken out of the mud and put, cleaned them up and put his light on them. Y'all got it? So you are what? Saint. I'm a saint. You are called to be a saint. Y'all got it? You were what? Called to be a what? Who cleaned you up? God. Talking about spiritually. Talking about you and I no longer. My spirit, when Adam sinned, your spirit was in the kingdom of darkness in Satan's territory. And Satan did what he want. Even if we tried to make it look good. Even if we said we were sorry, we weren't sorry. When you were in the dark. Am I right? Come on. Come on. Wake up in here. Come on. Come on, somebody. In the back. Ushers. I don't know what y'all got back there, but I need some noise in the back. Usher, holler at your boy. Do something. All right. Let me know y'all did. Because you know now they putting, they putting um, AI robots in seats. I gotta, you got to holler at me and make sure you're real. All right? <laughs> so Jude is a servant of who? Can't hear you. So what Jude is getting ready to tell you is because he's getting ready to write a heavy, short letter. He's telling you that is because I serve Jesus Christ, not you. And if a person that, that teaches don't understand that they're servant of Jesus Christ, they will try to appease you. They will try to uh, water it down so you don't get bothered by it. The truth is, you need to be bothered by some stuff. If you got smoke in your house, you don't need me coming patting your back and say, you know, it's going to be all right. You need to get your behind up and go find out where that smoke coming from. Y'all got it? Hello? Hello? So Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, that means he's telling us, hey, what I'm getting ready to write this coming directly from him because I'm hearing some stuff that's happening in this church. By the way, he was teaching this in Asia Minor. Asia Minor was right close to Turkey. Y'all got it? And so he's teaching this to a region. Remember, it's not a religion. Come on. Somebody said, this is not a what? This is a kingdom. Y'all got it? 
So a king has conquered a territory called Asia Minor, and he sent some leaders to this territory. Y'all got it? Not for religion, but for kingdom influence, agenda, and stru governmental structure. Everybody got it? Come on. All right, let's do the United States. United States is not a kingdom, but let's, it has, the United States has had world influence. It's starting to decrease, but the United States has had world in, uh, influence. How do I know? What's one of the signs that you have world influence? One of the signs is, is when other countries are start making their citizens learn your language. English. Y'all got it? Now, you, you won't see it as much because we're losing some of our dominance in some of our influential places, right? So when a nation now decides, yeah, we got a native language, but you need, we, you need to learn English. Because if you're going to learn English, the United States do a lot of business in all of these countries. So to make it more palatable and more easier to do business with them, we need to train our citizens so y'all have dual language. Y'all have what? Dual Isn't that interesting? Same thing God did? A dual language. Right? So you, you can flow here in English, but then after they both shout it out, bah, bah, bah. Now, now, now you can flow in the supernatural. Did you know all of God is in you? What tripped me out today, it says Jesus is the prototype. This Colossians 1 15. Jesus is the prototype. Y'all know what that means? Let's, let's, let's dig on that a second. Because I got to get us with this image thing. It says, Jesus, put up Colossians 1.15. Colossians 1.15. How many people sitting here don't know who they are? When you know who you are, you already know anything you're supposed to have, anything you're supposed to do, you're going to do it. I don't care if you know how to do it. And I don't care if you, you know all the facts yet. I don't care if you've been educated. If you will run with God. Here we go. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? That word image means prototype. What does that mean? Somebody give me feedback. Come on. Come on. On the uh, live, the chat, tell me. Give me some feedback. The, it's the what? The original creator. Come on, prototype. I can't hear you. The model. Right? Okay. What if I told you a prototype? So Jesus is the prototype of the Father. That means he's not just some offshoot. He's literally a picture of the Father. That's why when the disciples say, show us the Father, and it suffice. He said, Philip, you've seen me. You've seen the Father. Because I'm not an offshoot. I'm not second. Y'all got it? Y'all caught that? Y'all heard what he said? He said, if you've seen me, you've seen what? The Father. Why? Because I am, the Father is, is a prototype. So guess who else be that? Who's in Christ? So why are you angry? Why you can't get along with people? Where you get that from? Why are you talking about you having a problem with your spouse? I don't know if you, we're going to stunt like Jesus. Jesus wasn't no hero. You are supposed to run like him. You're supposed to be speaking to trees, stopping storms. Not running to him. He said, greater works than these you're going to do. Sound like we got an image problem, Eddie. What you talking about you can't lose weight? What? What you talking about? Jesus is able to control every part of the body of Christ. Hello? Come on, somebody. Prototype. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Who is the image? Let us make man. In our image, after our likeness, let them have dominion over the earth. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Let us make man, male or female, in, after our, let them, all Jesus was, the last Adam. Jesus walked in the position that Adam lost. And now you and I are commanded to walk the same way. That's why the enemy lied to you and tell you, make you say stuff about yourself. You know, I'm an introvert. You put that label on yourself. Or, you know, I got, NA, I got HD and all that other stuff. The world going to put all that on the saints. The, the saints. 
The saints. The world don't know. The saints. You walk around here taking all this medicine because that's what they told you. When you have healing uh, faculties on the inside. You keep taking your medicine until you get faith for this and then you start seeing a difference. Y'all got it? So don't go run out because some of y'all don't have it that understand it. It's in your head now. Now you got to meditate on this. You got to understand everything you need right on the inside of you. Where is the kingdom of God? I can't hear you. Where is it? He said, don't, they're going to tell you it's the kingdom over here. He's going to tell you it's over there. Don't follow him because the kingdom of God is where? So I got righteousness, peace, and joy. What's your problem? I got the kingdom of rightness in me. I can get it right. I can apologize and not have to deal with that anymore, be remembering anymore. I got a king inside of me. What? What? I want people changing how they dress. Do you know what glory is? Glory is catching somebody's attention. Y'all don't, y'all realize that Jesus caught people's attention. They had this little guy named Zacchaeus, Luke 19. Little bitty guy. He was a chief tax collector. And one day the, the disciples were the rich guy. Anybody remember the, the story of the little rich ruler? He asked Jesus, what must I do to get eternal life? And then Jesus said, you know the commandments. And he began to say, I did all of these from my youth. And Jesus said, one thing you like. And every time you approach Jesus with self-righteousness, he will always tell you you like one thing. And what was the one thing? Sell what you have, follow me. He didn't tell him to sell it all. He said, sell what you have. People read that into it. Sell what you have, follow me. He was telling him to be liquid. I'm making you a disciple. Come roll with me. You can't be tied down by assets and all that stuff. I need you liquid. Sell that stuff, give to the poor, and let's roll. Follow me. It say he went away sad. Then the disciples start discussing, Brandon. The disciples start saying, man, if the rich dude don't get in, who can get in? Then Jesus tells them, what's impossible with man is possible with God. What he's telling him, my father can get a rich man saved. Y'all can't, but my father can. So now we go to Luke 19, and you see this guy named Zacchaeus, a little bitty guy, a rich dude, who all of a sudden want to see Jesus. And the crowds was around. It was like Mardi Gras. And Jesus was the float. So literally, all these people around, they got people, throw me something, mister. And now, little Zacchaeus, he climbs up a sycamine tree. So metaphoric. Are you sick of yours? Are you sick of yours? <laughs> Are you sick of yours? I don't know about you. You got to get sick of mediocrity. You got to be sick of being just broke. You got to be sick of playing religion and not seeing a difference. You just got to, once you start being sick of it, you're going to stop. You're going to get to who you are. You, You don't have to keep sipping and tipping. You don't have to. You don't have to be angry all the time. You really can't let stuff go. You don't have to rehearse stuff what people did in your mind all day. Y'all better holler at your boy in here. Because I'm sitting here with all this foolishness. I'm telling you, you've, you've been set free. I'm, come on, you got to say, I'm free. You got to pronounce this. You are free. You get liberation through the words of your mouth. I am free. I am not going to allow this stuff. I'm not going to make it palatable in my mind to live below my image anymore. And Zacchaeus climbed to the top of that tree, saw Jesus. And the funny thing is, Jesus saw him. He said, Zacchaeus, make haste. I must eat at your house. Who y'all think told Jesus? To invite himself to that man's house. Hello? Who? The father. This man doesn't even know. The father didn't put a desire for him to see Jesus. He'd been hearing about him. But the father has placed in him a drive to see him. He doesn't know the father has already called his name to be born again. 
So God is strategically doing chess moves. This little dude, he's short, so God got to get him up in the tree so he can see Jesus and Jesus can see him. So as Jesus is walking by, all these crowds, all these people making noise, he look up and say, Zacchaeus, come down. I must eat at your house. Zacchaeus doesn't know already in heaven God has already chosen him. God has already saved him. He's just walking through the earthly process to get it. So our father's a master chess player. He wasn't at that point in the parade by accident. You're not here by accident. You're here to get what God wants you to hear so you can go out and be victorious based on what you've been dealing with. You need to know that you're made in the image of God and God is your prototype. That means you're not a knockoff. You're the real deal. You can control your appetite. You can get stronger as you get older. You can be smart while you're young. You cannot waste time while you're young. You can learn stuff while you're young. You can develop something by, by God's spirit that you've never gone to school for. We've gotten in this Western culture, and we think we got to be educated with everything. Well, whose spirit created all this education? Hello? Come on, wake up, wake up, wake up. So Zacchaeus come down, come to his house, and now that conviction gets on him. Got Jesus at the house. Zacchaeus stand up. Half my goods I give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anybody out of anything, I'm going to restore it fourfold. Jesus says, Zacchaeus, salvation has come to your house. Hello? He said, half, I, half my goods I give to the poor. If Jesus was telling people give it all, Jesus would have told him, oh, no, I need it all. Jesus says, salvation has come to your house. That's why you won't pray for men to get saved. I'm telling you, that's why you try to work the man. Pray for your husbands to get saved and get right with God so the whole house can get on some of this. The whole house should be get on with your husband smoking. Y'all understand? So who is made in the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. So let's get back to Jew. Y'all ready? Let's roll. Jude, there we go. So now we know Jude, Jude is servant of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, so am, I. so am I. Now he's telling you he's my natural brother James. James is the, the, the pastor over Jerusalem. To them that are sanctified, that's talking about you. Somebody say he's talking to me now. Sanctified, sanctified means set apart for a sacred use. Somebody look at somebody right now and tell them I ain't normal. I ain't normal. I'm sacred. Come on. Come on now. Come on, look at somebody right now. I'm, 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 I'm sacred. Y'all know what sacred is? What y'all do with stuff? Yeah, there you go. Come on, mother. Mother shout now. How at your boy. <laughs> special. Why are you acting like you're not special? You special. I know you don't know that. You may not believe that. But the world can see you if you act like you. You special. Right? So now he's saying, I'm writing to them that are set apart by God the Father. Who, who made you special? God the Father. Boy, mama, you own it, lady. Boy, I need you every day. <laughs> God sanctified by who? I can't hear you. Set apart by God. Oh, but look at this one. Preserved in Jesus Christ. Anybody ever use preservative? Hmm? What's he talking about preserved in Jesus Christ? Hello? What does that mean, Terry? Preserved. I'm set apart by God, but King Jesus is my protector. He's my preserver. He preserves me. He keeps you. Come on, somebody. Come on. Somebody say he keeps me. That's right. He's been keeping you. Them angels been watching over you. When the last time you said thank you? We just take it for granted. He keeps us. He helps you have babies. He gives you a baby to have. And called. So now, go back. Now I'm set apart by who? God the Father. I'm preserved. I'm kept in Jesus Christ. 
Got it? I'm set apart by God, but preserved in Jesus Christ. Y'all got it? Because I'm in the kingdom now. Y'all got it? I'm in the what? How, so how can the kingdom protect me? Because the kingdom is more powerful than any kingdom. And once you get into the kingdom through Jesus Christ, you protect it. Y'all got it? I was listening to Nancy Dufresne, and she was telling the story of a dog she had. Her dog would, little dog would leave the house and go over to her neighbor's house. And the neighbor feed the dog, and the dog just stay there all day and then come back later. And then the neighbor was getting ready to go out of town, and they told her, they came over. She hadn't really been talking to them a whole lot. They just kind of cordial. But when they were getting ready to go out of town, they came over and said, we just want to let you know we're going to be going out of town. And we let you know because you know your dog used to come over. <laughs> and so they, they said they're going out of town. Well, her dog, when they left, had gone over to their house. And in that area, it was a wooded area, so they had like wolves or something that was close to it. And so what that little dog would do was run outside a little bit. When the wolves see the wolves coming and running after, that dog would run back in the house. So she, that dog would be teasing that wolf. They were, that defense. And the neighbors was telling that because if she didn't know that and that dog went over there, not knowing that that fence wasn't open because we weren't there. And that dog go tease them, them animals and try to run back in there and it's locked. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? You preserved. The only, when you're not preserved is when you allow fear to get in. You got to watch fear. You got to watch fear. Fear breaks the hedge. You know animals can smell fear? Animals can stare. You know, if you step into who you are, an animal know it. Right? So that animal come down here, and she, she like this, I wish you would, and that animal go on to the next one. And then if he all look nervous and all that, that animal going to feel that frequency and going to attack him. Animals are intuitively supposed to be submitted to humans. That's why a man this tall can tell an elephant what to do. God has subjected the animal kingdom to be under the kingdom of men. And the kingdom of men are supposed to be under the kingdom of God. Come on. Here we go. And called. So now you got a call. Somebody say, I got a call. Why are you hitting ignore? Why are you hitting ignore? Mercy. Now he's telling you what you got. Mercy. Somebody say mercy. Mercy is God's kindness I don't deserve. Anybody got it? Anybody like that? Can somebody say thank you, Lord? Peace is what Jesus accomplished through the cross in his blood. Now heaven and you got peace. Y'all got it? So now you carry it around your own peace. The only time you're not going to have peace is if you're messing with it. Y'all got it? Even in turmoil, God will give you peace. As long as you don't mess it up. And if you do mess it up, just repent. And love. So now I got mercy, kindness of God, don't deserve it. And I got peace. And I got me some love. And he tripping and he's saying, multiply. Come on. Come on. What you talking about? What? I got it. What? What? It wasn't enough for him to just give me mercy. It wasn't enough for him to just give me peace. It wasn't enough for him to just give me love. But he gonna multiply. God is a multiplier. God is a multiplier. God is a multiplier. But you got to say this. When you start feeling anything different, you got to open your mouth. Why? Because you access the things of God through the words of your mouth. Come on. I got mercy. Mercy. His mercy is anew. How often? Every morning. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy. There's sometimes I do sin and I do deserve it, but he gives me mercy. And then he tells me, give somebody else the mercy. Why are you holding somebody like that? I had a situation and the Lord just slapped me right in the face with it. I had already made a decision. He told me, forbear. Forbear. And then God, as you grow in him, he going to call you on it. 
because he's going to bring stuff back to you when he forbear with you. And he brought it back to me. When I was losing all that money in the car dealerships, and we couldn't hardly, uh, the, and when they, General Motors put us on a forbearance agreement, meaning we know you don't have money to cover it, so we're going to sit in the store, let you sell the cars, but we're going to be over the keys. They could have just taken a license. They had me sign a forbearance agreement. How much has God forbear with us? How often has he forgiven you? When he should have come on sweep and just sweep it in. Can we just have a praise break real quick? <laughs> on, online, I, I, they got me online. Tears, what, what, what we got? Well, can we just have a praise God? Come on. Did y'all know Jesus put us in on a forbearance agreement? Huh? I was able to keep my dealership open, still able to do business. They could have snatched the license. That's what we got to be thankful for. That's why you give people a pass. That's why. All us jacked up in different areas and get it wrong sometimes. But when God put the light on it now, come on, change it now. This is the grace time to change it. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Thank you. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for peace. Come on, peace. Peace. Peace multiplied. Peace. Peace. You realize you got peace with heaven. It said the wrath of God is poured out on the children of disobedience. So in Christ, we got peace. He said, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world. Then he says stuff like, let not your heart. That's not as on you, baby. When he used those kind of words, let, that's on you. I got to decide how I'm going to deal with this. I, I think I told the church, I was, well, have my, y'all sit down, sit down. My children, we were, count, we were conversing. It was Tirza and, and, and Nabu. And we just had that time in the kitchen. You remember that? We were crying and all of that. And then my oldest daughter came. I'm crying. She came and pat me on the back and all us crying. And I'm crying. I'm crying. I'm crying. And then I'm crying. And, and Sanea hug, hugging me, just patting me. Tears are crying. And we just had a major moment, right? And then all of a sudden, Tirza, I tell you, I jumped up. I wiped my eyes. I said, all right, that's enough of that. That's okay. There's a time for that. But now it's time to not let your heart be troubled now. Right? Because you got to be careful now. You can go from properly grieving, properly uh, assessing something, properly crying. But you can't let that enemy now put that spirit of heaviness on you. So I had to get up. I had to get up, wipe my face. All right, where are we going? Let's, where are we going? Let's go now. Because if you're not careful, that doggone enemy will have you all in the black, have gloom on you, have you putting flat clock and ashes on you. You got to get your behind up. All right. We done did all that. Praise God. All right. Let's go. What are we going to do? That's, am I right, Terrence? They thought something was wrong with me. I never told them where I got it from. I got it from Dee Dee Freeman, Dr. Freeman's wife. Because Dr. Uh, Dr. Michael Freeman almost lost his life. I'm talking about dead where they had to keep turning him because of pneumonia. They had to turn the bed. They had already, very few people ever survived what God brought that man through. She told that story. She said they were in a bed, and then they were just crying. And she, the sister, the daughters, everybody crying. And she cried. And her daughter was telling the story. Said, y'all, you remember, Mom? We were doing all that crying. We were all sad. And then all of a sudden... Even while dad was still in his condition, all of a sudden we doing all that crying and we crying, everybody hugging and all that. And all of a sudden you just got up. Dried your eyes and said, okay, all right, let's go now. And that's what you got to do. That's what you have to do in this world. You got to get yourself going. That's on you. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? 
Believe also in me. I'd pull that one on, on Pastor T at times. Pastor T, you have a little doubt? I say, you believe in God? And she, yes. I say, believe also in me. And then I said it so much, she knew it was coming. <laughs> what am I saying? Everything that God's going to do for you, it's already been done. The enemy is to get you think you're missing something. He didn't leave nothing out, Eddie. If you pray in the spirit and seek him, you're not going to be going back and forth. It's not going to be, oh, I hope, oh, uh, no. Once you get, I, I got God on the inside of me. My father is my prototype. I'm in the kingdom of light. Huh? I'm like, where, we, where, where are you at? Where are you at? Let's go. I don't need anybody. It's time to raise up an army. You ain't got to go to Jerusalem. You ain't got to go anywhere. It's in you. That's you saying, well, you know it takes a long time to change. Okay, for you it's going to take a long time. That's you. Well, you know, you know, you know, you know, you can't forget. That's a lie. Joseph told his brothers, God caused me to forget. You choose to remember and bring it up. Stop giving your, give yourself a little credit. You definitely can do whatever you need to do. Stop making these excuses. Go to these doctor's appointments. Take care of yourself. Get your behind out and get to some walking and get in shape. Why? God on the inside of you. God on the inside of you. Minister Max, start eating them vegetables. Start eating them salads. You got God on the inside of you. Tell your mouth we're getting ready to eat the broccoli. Come on, we ain't, we, we, he didn't leave us here as no doggone offerings. Y'all got it? I told y'all the story about beets. I ain't like no beets. My mouth rejected beets, but my spirit didn't. And I told my mouth, you're going to keep the beets. And now I love beets. You got to tell your body what to do. Your body is not in control of you anymore. Come on, somebody. This is, I need to write a declaration. What was that they gave, that letter they wrote? Was it Declaration of Independence? What was that? That's what we need to do in this place. You've been set free. Your body don't control you. Your mind, you can control your thoughts. We need to read the Declaration of Independence here. You've been set free. Paul would say it all the time. I'm, fr I'm a free man. That means I have nothing that can control me. And you got to start talking like that. You got to tell that dog on, I've been eating a few, I've been eating some brownies the past two weeks, uh, the past two days, and then I ain't going to eat them. Brownie, you, you done for now. You got to talk to that stuff. You got it? Leg, why are you hurting? You ain't supposed to be hurting. Ain't nothing supposed to be hurting in me. Y'all got it? I've been free from hurt. All right? Somebody say, come on now. And... <laughs> Your prayers get answered. My prayers get answered. Come on, say it. My prayers get answered. They, my, my, the staff will tell you. They'll tell you. Like, if Peter tell you, okay, I, we, I said, we pray for something. I said, what's up? Where's that? Why we, why we don't have it yet? And we usually have it. We just haven't noticed it, haven't pursued it. Because sometimes when God answers your prayer, you got to participate in it. You sitting around here. God done brought, he done brought everything you prayed for across you. Hello? He done brought people across you, and those people are not going to stand and tell you, hey, I'm the one you prayed for. You got to see it. Because the power of God is going to help you see what he sees. Your natural man not going to see it. That's why you got to be rolling with God. That's why you got to be walking in holiness so you can hear him. Walking in impurity. It says he spoke through holy men of God to write these scriptures. Wasn't no raggedy living people writing these scriptures. So there must have been a qualification for God to work through you. So purity is a huge value in the kingdom. And you don't have to be dirty. Clean yourself up. Look at your clothes. I'm going to go over all of our staff. Watch how you work, come here to work. I'm serious. 
Man looks on the outside. God looks on the heart. Y'all got it? And you ain't got You can go to Target. Isn't that what y'all call it? Y'all fancy it up, Target, 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 right? You ain't got to have all that expensive clothes. Just whatever you got, put it on right. Everybody got me? Put it on right. Got it? They got a hole in it? Get rid of it. Now, I know Pastor T, she already thinking about, I got this little sweater right here. See this right here? I ha- I'm looking for this kind of material. You see how I just get, I get personal in here? So I got these two shirts, one black and one blue, and I haven't found this material, and I love this material. It got holes all over it. I, I almost want to take my, this foot off so y'all can see it. <laughs> Look, Pastor T, don't do that. <laughs> What's my point? What's my point? Make it the best. Make it the best. Make your room the best. Make your schooling the best. If you're going to be on a job, that job should be better because of you. You shouldn't be just collecting a check. You're a bad witness. God's sending us in places to be light. The worst boss should be your ally. Because you, you, got, you got something on the inside of you to help you deal with difficult people. And God is trying to get them to see the light. I was in here and all the people, all the people that's in this building, make sure when we got contractors, people here in this building and you come in here, you need to go witness to them. Go have a conversation with them. We had a little young cat that was in here putting the chairs together. Man, I went there and talked to that young man. Fascinating. You got to have a heart for people. This not something to keep. This not a frat. We ain't, no, we ain't got no uh, secret handshake. This is to be given away. And you rushing everywhere? Where are you going? You mean God can't take two or three minutes for you to talk to a human being? And you that busy? And you that broke? <laughs> you running around talking about I got to go somewhere and you broke? You might want to stop. Well, let me see what God got to say. Let me see, maybe I'm missing him. Maybe I need to spend some time with this person. Y'all hear what I'm saying? When the last time you talked to somebody, last time you invited somebody, what you doing? Y'all know the Lord knows if you actually actively involved in with the kingdom business, this ain't about you getting healthy and all of that for you. It's for you to be a witness. You're 80 years old and you're walking around. Look at this lady. Sister Cheryl, how old are you? 77. And then we we got another 77 right here. And, and this one, this, this one getting to moving more and more. Y'all messing around? Y'all going to see here doing jumping jacks. That's why God brought it here, to get that light in here. Let's get going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, somebody. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You got to roll. You can't let yourself get idle like that. You can't let yourself get downcast like that. God says you're going to finish strong. You're going to finish what? How old are you, Archie? Eight zero. Eight zero. The man was 79 when he got married. 79 when you got married. What's your problem is? What you talking about? Come on, somebody. Am I, am I in the right place? Yeah. We haven't even got any players. Mercy, peace, love, multiply. Mercy, peace, love, multiply. Mercy, peace, love. If your peace disturbed, you got a problem. What, what did you let? And stop saying you, you did something because somebody made you do it. You are a grown, free, born again child of God. Nobody makes you do nothing. You did it because you wanted to. Come on, somebody. Well, I wouldn't have did that if she didn't did that. No, you were in control. Everybody say, no excuses. No excuses. Take your, I, we need some shirts. I've been thinking about some shirts. One shirt is uh, keep your flesh, leave your flesh at the door. I got that from that Emo's restaurant. I think it's, they, it's provolone, some kind of cheese or something. Yeah, or, or something. Leave your attitude at the door. So I put some shirts on. Leave your attitude. Get out of here. You ain't human. I'm just human. You're not. You're more than human. You're more than human. You don't have to get it angry all the time, fussing with people with the boss and all the jobs. Keep having this every other week and every month. 
Stop that foolishness. Talking crazy to people. Getting mad at bosses. You know how crazy this world is? If you weren't saved, you'd be crazy too. You know the pressure's on people? You know how the enemy is tightening and putting the fire up now? So he need love in the room. Y'all got it? They, they, he put you in there to bring love in the room. <laughs> you fighting and running, talking about the, the boss, talking to all your coworkers. And now Jesus left out. He can't even allow your coworker or your boss to see an example of somebody who's standing on love territory. Next verse, please. Okay, guys. Beloved, when I, when I gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation, what Jude is saying, I wanted to talk to you about our common salvation. I wanted to talk to you about Jesus Christ, him crucified, and just applaud you and say, great job. It was needful. Somebody say needful. needful. Now, how many of y'all know that's a key word? What he's getting ready to write is needful. That wasn't his intention. He's going to shift now. I wanted to talk about our common salvation. But it's needful because y'all allowing some people to come and impress y'all and teach y'all some junk. Getting you out the power of God through sensual living. You're allowing people who perfected communicating and, and, and read the book, uh, making friends. So you've allowed that to creep in the church and let your guard down. You let people come up here and teach some junk that I didn't teach you, that I didn't send to you. The apostles didn't believe. Because two, two of the people, one, they didn't think uh, the body, they thought you couldn't control the body. And they thought as long as you were saved, whatever you did with the body was all right. Think about that. That's what they were teaching. And, and Jude heard about it. So I have to be careful. You have to be careful who you listen to. And then some of them were coming through straight greedy, making merchandise. Running games. If you do this, you do this, come on. Do it, do it right away. Do it right away. Do it right away. Give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it, give it. Taking the saints' money. He said, making merchandise of you. I think we've seen that. I think we've seen it. I think we've seen it. So you got to be careful. Got to be careful who you have up here. Because they, now how would they get in? Jude, we close with this. Jude said they came in unaware. Why did they come in other words? People got impressed with them. They sound good. They sound like they know the Bible. I can tell when people look at people, how they look and how they sound and make judgments about them based on sensual and reasoning. And the ones that don't make decisions about people based on who they are spiritually. Because if you're in tune with God, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you will be able to identify a fake. I don't care how good they sound. You're going to know this joker don't know the Bible at all. Just a dangerous person. A false teacher is not just somebody giving you false information. A false teacher is somebody standing up there don't know what they're doing. Don't even know what they're talking about. They're just as false. They can hurt you just as much. Y'all understand that? Yes, Hello? Because they can, they can confidently say something that's, that's not even God's word. And you thinking it must be God. And it ain't. So that's what Jude was dealing with. And that's where we're closing with. Jude was, we'll pick it up. Jude was dealing with now, here's what he says. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you. Do what? Yeah. Encourage you. Wake up. Get involved. Be active here. To do what? What am I exhor exhorting you to do? That you should earnestly do what? Yeah. Contend for the faith. Whoa. That's a word that means struggle. Fight for it. Y'all got it? Fight for it. Don't you be standing passive. Fight for this gospel about Jesus Christ and him only. For the faith which was delivered unto the what? Saints. Saints. What he's saying is, when we deliver to you, to you what the apostles gave you, make sure you stay on that. And if somebody come up here with something else, put them up. Y'all remember that back in the days? Put them up. Yeah. Somebody come with some other foolishness? Put them up. You reading that Bible? That ain't, ain't it. Put them up. In other words, what he's saying, don't you be passive. Don't you be passive. Don't you let. He's going to give some examples. Don't let somebody come in here teaching that you can live any kind of way. Don't you do that. That's, what, that's, the, that's another one that what they were doing. They're saying, you know, the body, 
The body itself, it can do what it wants. You can really live how you want because of grace. That's another one. They were preaching like grace make you, you, you know, God got grace, so you can just continue to fornicate. You can just continue to commit adultery. You can just continue to lie because God's grace is going to cover it. And then he's going to give some serious examples of God's judgment of foolish people who believe that foolishness. He said he delivered them out of Egypt, but not all of them made it because they wouldn't believe. So what he says is you be very careful have people come up here talking about this all this sloppy grace. God just going to forgive you. No. And he gives a whole lot of good, great examples. He said, remember Sodom and Gomorrah? He brings up all that stuff. Then he said, then there's going to be some of you standing up here. They're going to be disrespecting people in authority. Talking crazy about the president right in front of y'all. He said, angels who left their, rank, their realm and came down back in Genesis and slept with the women. He said, all of them end up in the chains. What he's saying to you is, don't you ever, ever go to sleep and think you can continue in your wayward word, ways. And don't you let anybody stand up here preaching you that foolishness. You put, we put ourselves in serious danger, and I'm held accountable for it. Y'all got it? Somebody said, it's serious. It's serious. It's serious. We finished. It's serious. That's the sober part of this. It's a small one. He says, there's another one next week I'll talk about. Well, the next time we meet. Keep yourself in the love of God. We rejoice when we say he'll preserve us, he'll keep us, right? Do you know what he tells you to do? Keep yourself in the love of God. Right before he tells you, pray in the Holy Spirit. He said, keep yourself in the love of God. So God going to keep you but you got to keep yourself in love. Y'all got it? That's the last one I want to drop on you. That's the last drip I want to give you. Y'all got it? God, we already know he preserved us, so he keep us. Everybody got that, right? But what's your, your charge? Keep yourself in the love of God. Keep yourself on love's territory. Keep yourself love overlook insults. Keep yourself getting that, all that other junk out of you. Y'all got it? Y'all got it? Who got keep, who to keep themselves in the love of God? Who do? I do. You do. That's it. You got to do it. Because Satan's going to test it. He's going to throw some stuff at you. But you got to stay on love's territory. Don't get on Satan's territory. We will know what happens when we get on Satan's territory. De decrease. Right? Hate. Confusion. But stay on love. If I stay on love, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying in the Holy Ghost, he said, I got to read that to you. Jude. Pastor, why you didn't stop? Because he told me to read that to you. Verse 17, Jude 117. Jude 117. But you, beloved, talking to us, say, talking to me. Remember, remember you the words which the Lord spoke were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. So now what he's saying, remember what the apostles taught you, what y'all been hearing me say on Sunday, right? We have to have an apostolic mindset. Y'all remember that? In other words, apostolic means the apostles are not concerned with how you feel. They don't want to hurt you, but they're going to get what heaven's agenda is to you. Y'all got it? So he's telling them, remember what was spoken before from the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Pay attention to what he told you. There's some, part of people going away is when they forget the gospel and the word. And that's what you'll find, people getting away from the word. And when you get away from the word, you end up away from God. So he says, but beloved, remember. That word remember is said a lot in the Bible. Why? Because people forget. Remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Next verse. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who shall walk after their own ungodly lust. He's talking about the people that's been teaching them. Next. These be they who separate themselves, sensual having not the spirit. They talking about sensuality. 
they're making carnality and sinful practices acceptable in this church. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, doing what? Oh, it sounds like, it sounds like praying in the Holy Spirit is going to be combat that. Y'all got it? You'll catch it. Next verse. Come on, everybody read. One, two, three, read. Keeping yourselves in what? Who got to do that? For what's the precursor to being able to do that? The verse right before it. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Praying in the Holy Spirit. Pastor T and I visit our neighbor. I told you guys, I think on Sunday, we visit our neighbor and all I really, I've done a lot for him. I've blown his leaves, all kind of stuff. But I hadn't really because he had threatened to kill my dog because he was barking. I get it. And, and so we were, we were very cordial, tax and all that, look after each other. But he had a surrogate, he and his wife had surrogate babe pregnancy, surrogate pregnancy. I told Pastor T, Pastor T went and got a gift. Next thing you know, we were over in the house over two hours. Was it about two? Let's say an hour. But how many of y'all know I've been praying a lot in the Holy Spirit? I've been praying a whole lot in the Holy Spirit. Y'all got it? That's how you do the shift. That's how you stay in the love of God. Y'all got it? So you get people not praying in the Holy Spirit, it's going to be hard to stay in the love of God. What y'all think about that? We close. We out. We out. Come on, somebody. Was this good?